today's conversation of depression era wisdom. Um, I wanted to continue on with a comment, the comments that I'm answering via video uh, from some comments under these videos. And one of them was under the Christmas video. We had shared this past weekend um, the homemade Christmas that we had two years ago uh, and repurposed. We also repurposed it at Christmas to encourage you that even though things might be really tight this year, they don't have to be depressing. And under that video, somebody asked the question or brought up the fact that, you know, my kids are grown. And so obviously doing something like this for them is much more difficult to find things that, you know, that they'll appreciate. And I totally agree. So I have some eggs to wash. I've got to get some clean. And I thought, well, I did this today. I would answer that question or at least share with you what we have done because we have done several homemade and repurposed Christian Christmases as well as birthdays and I do agree um, not necessarily so much that older children are are harder but when you do so many of these it becomes more difficult to um, think of things and that's usually where we find ourselves with the older boys now the younger two they they still really enjoy these so they're super easy and of course being young it's super easy because they they get tickled over the littlest thing but with RJ and Josiah as they aged um, what we started to do is we started to gift them family memorabilia or things that have been passed down to Ron now it didn't wouldn't work from some a family like my family because my mother did not receive much memorabilia from her family and she hadn't collected a lot of things you know she wasn't a collector of things that were uh, knickknacks or um, things that were collectibles things that she just didn't, she didn't get stuff like that so she didn't have that to pass down to us and therefore um, I wouldn't have that to pass down to my kids but with Ron's family um, I don't think they threw away anything, at least on his father's side. So Ron had gotten um, from his father and his grandfather a lot of um, things. I mean, it wasn't real valuable stuff by any stretch of the imagination, but grandpa, you know, great grandpa's knife or, um, you know, grandpa's set of coins. Um, we in, I mean, we in here got boxes of papers and newspapers from the period when they were growing up. And so we, for one Christmas, for RJ, what we did, we took, um, because it was a big World War II buff, I had found, I think I found on eBay or it was in um, Ron's grandfather's stuff was a newspaper of World War II uh, being declared for the U.S. entering into it. And with that, we had from Ron's grandfather, or the boys' great-grandfather, some foreign bills. His, his grandfather collected foreign coins. And um, we had some German money, and we also had some uh, money from France. So we put those things into a... Uh, into a shadow box and there was some other odds and ends um, some metals that that had been passed down on through the years uh, two of two of his Ron's grandfather's brothers the, the set of twins had fought in World War II and they both perished in World War II so we had a lot of things about them that we created and put into those things so that it was, it was things that RJ was interested in, it was part of the family, and we just, Ron made a, a shadow box out of an old window that we had. Uh, speaking of which, well, for those of you that have been waiting for our home tour that we haven't done yet, this cupboard behind me, uh, these are two old windows that we got quite a while ago, and Ron repurposed those to fit on this cupboard. And the, this cupboard, I really, I, I'm wanting to do the home tour, but it's it's going to take a little bit of time because I want to show you the before and after uh, photos of of this cupboard. Um, so I'm chasing rabbits here, but with Josiah, uh, we 
repurposed a table into a writer's desk for them. We've, uh, Ron has made a lap desk. Um, we've given the boys knives that belong to somebody in the family. Uh, so Ron had a collection of, of small pocket knives and, you know, we pass those on down to the older boys. So, you know, depending on what your family has to offer, you can usually find something that is of a, a connection for them that would be valued as a gift. It may not have much monetary value, but it certainly could have a lot of thought. Um, you know, we, Ron got a collection of some arrowheads. And so over the years, you know, each boy may find an arrowhead in their stocking. Uh, same with coins. You know, they collected, his grandfather and father collected coins, and so we've, over the years, little by little, the kids have ended up with much of the coin collection. So that is one thing that you can do for older children. Now another thing, if you really, if you don't have anything to pass down and you just know that things are going to be super strapped for you, here is something that we have done, and you can do this with any age. You just have to take some time and be really creative. Um, I did this years ago with Ron for the first time, and then I later as the boys got older, I did it with them. But it's the 12 days of Christmas, and you do it backwards. So you start 12 days before Christmas Day, and as you know, go through the song, and you know, yeah, what is that? The 12th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me 12 drummers drumming. And so, for one of ours that we did, I gave gave on the 12th day 12 dum dums. Now those are those little dum dum suckers. Um, you can tell how long ago that was because that was before <laughs> our organic days. But so for the next 10 days, I did little things. Um, 11 pipers piping could be 11 pieces of, of something. Um, until we got up to the day of Christmas. And that's where you may, you know, if you're able to, you buy something more significant. And you're really only spending much money on that one gift. And, and that goes in to whatever you're able to afford or feel like you can afford. And maybe you can't afford anything, so you really try to be creative in that uh, song and find something that identifies with, you know, my true love gave to me a partridge and a pear tree. Um, and so just, just try to think of something that identifies with the person you're trying to get that gift for. And it can be, a, you know, if it has to be a homemade gift or it is a homemade gift or a repurposed gift, but the point is, is you, you make that whole time, you spread it out, it, it's a fun little thing to do, and when things are tight, they don't feel um, slighted. And you don't feel like you have slighted anyone. So, and then another idea, and this will be the last one I share today, that we've done is we've done coupons. Um, we've made coupons of all sorts for all reasons, and you can take those coupons, you know, whether it's like a back massage or a, a day off of chores, we've done that one a lot, um, or a special meal, um, a, a game night. You can do those in so many ways. Uh, a special gift um, or a special thing they can pick, you know, maybe at a later time if they're old enough to understand that. And You can take those coupons and you can make as many or as few as you want, but you know, if you just spend a little time and you decorate them and then you, you wrap them neatly and prettily, it really does, it changes the whole presentation and the whole atmosphere and what, what maybe you start with trepidation, you then realize that um, not only was it fun, but the receiver is excited and thrilled to get it. So, all right, well that's, that is my thoughts on older children and doing a homemade or a repurposed Christmas and we will have hopefully have some more ideas uh, to share as the days get draw closer to the holiday we're trying to share as many as early as we can to give um, whoever might see this and find this useful time to prepare for their homes and their families we will talk again soon God bless